This is a box I've been working on for a long time. I originally made this because technicians would stay, take a, a jumper wire to test their lights on their trailers and just put it in the plug. And then not realizing when they pulled the wire out, they would be like, why is that wire hot? And they wouldn't think of nothing else about it. And they were melting all the wires, usually the uh, marker light circuit and they would be melted in there. I've had to take a lot of trailers apart to rerun that circuit. So I started building boxes so we could try to prevent that. And this is the latest version I have. This is a box over here that I've made so I can test these when I'm done building them, these here. So this also has its own power supply in it. So if you've got a trailer that doesn't have power, you can use the onboard power supply. You can also, when you plug this into the trailer, you'll see your voltage here off the trailer. And if you wanna test your converter, you can just plug the coach in and you'll see the converter voltage here. So you don't even have to go inside the coach to know if the converter is working. So that's one uh, feature I really like about this. So there's a lot of positions here with these switches. What this one does here, is it's turning on this row of um, switches. And what we can do with these switches, this is the first thing you wanna do. So position one, we're gonna test the load. So we can see we've got 16 amps. I, I put a lot of brake magnets in here so I could get this um, tested really well as far as the amperage. So you can see electrically if your brake circuit's working. Then you can go through and check your marker lights. See if your marker lights are working. If there was a short in the circuit, it would blow the fuse. So instead of melting everything, we could just blow the fuse, we'll put that back in. And then we can go to our left turn circuit, our right turn, and our backup. So it's really important you wanna do this. I've got an LED bulb here so we could see the smaller draws also. So it's real important that you do this function first. That way we're gonna make sure we don't have any shorts or opens in those circuits. So if it was open, you wouldn't see the amp draw change. You really don't care what the amp draw is as long as you see a change. So as long as you see a change in the circuit, then you're pretty sure that that's working. So then we can go to position two what position two does is it's gonna turn on our running lights and then it's gonna flash our left and right turns at different speeds. So we can be assured that these aren't wired backwards. And then you can do your visual and walk around the treader. This whole process takes you one to two minutes and you're pretty certain everything's gonna be working solid on this treader before you deliver it. So here we're actually connected to a treader. I like to start from left to right, do the brake circuit first. You get about two to three amps per brake magnet. So on a two axle trailer, anything under eight amps, I like to go check them individually. Then you check the marker light. You can see the amp draw is pretty low, so it's telling me we got LED lights on here. Then we check the left turn, right turn. We wanna make sure we see a change so we know we don't have an open circuit. A blown fuse will tell us we have a short. Um, you have to have a direct short for that fuse to blow. Then I see an amp change on the backup light, so we leave that backup light switch on. So we go into position two, and we can do a walk around at that point and do a visual, make sure each light is actually on. So you got a slow left turn and a fast right turn. So in the center position, zero, you can actually take a double mail plug like I have one. Here, and I'll post a video of that and you can test the truck seven way in the zero position and th this will be your indicators here if the truck's working. In this position here in zero, um, I ran some Jayco traders that the side markers are also turn signals. Well, they won't function in number two mode. So what I've done in zero mode, you can turn on this flasher and you can have them both flash so you can make sure that that circuit's working also, that the lights are flashing on the side of the coach. 
and you can also isolate these. So if you just wanted to see the right turn working or the left turn working, you can isolate them. So here we're plugged into a truck seven way. We can start it and we can check our alternator voltage, see if the charge line's working. If we apply the brake, we'll see the brake controller. We can also see the uh, brake lights are working, the marker lights working, left turn, right turn, and you can also check the backup light. So this switch here is going to control this plug here. So I have this wire made up right here. And what this is going to allow us to do is, um, for an example, control a motor. So if I push this button here, I have this wireless remote. And if you watch the meter, you can see plus 13. And then if we go the other direction, we have a minus 13. So I use this like on an older slide out. If the pin is sheared, you have to replace the pin. You can just use this remote and you'll be right next to the motor or the area that you're trying to replace the pin and you can operate it very easily yourself. So here we're connected right to a slide out switch. These are the connections that go right to the motor or we can actually connect right to the motor using the power in the box and then you can operate a slide out or whatever you're trying to control and awning and you can be right where you need to be to line things up. You can also connect these um, right to the wires off of like a slide out switch. You can pull the switch off, connect these right to the switch, go to the motor there. You can also connect these um, like for a Schwintech switch. So you would have the three wires, you pull the three wires off. So you'd have a positive coming in. Then depending on which way you push the button, you get positive here or positive here. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate that here. So I'm gonna put a positive here. And then that's what position number two does. So if we push the button one direction, you can see on the meter, we got the 12 volts there. Uh, nothing on that side. And then if I switch the motor, the meter leads to here. Whoops. Okay, switch the meter leads to the other one, and then we get 12 volts on that side. So you can locate your slide out switch, remove it from the wall, pull the wires off and connect them to your harness here. And then you have control of the slide out through the wireless remote. So if you're going to do something with the slide topper or you want to see what's going on at the top or bottom rails, you have control of it. And then you can also hook right to the motor directly. And so this is really great for in reinstalling motors. So you put a little pressure on the top, tap the button a little bit until it lines up, it drops in. Then I also like to use this for removing and reinstalling the H channel. Since I've got everything squared up here where it needs to be, then you can run that in. And I've had a lot of success of reinstalling these Schwintex. I've got to work on about one a week. So this has come in real handy for me to get this job done quickly. I was using, you know, a 12 volt receptacle like this on the side there. These are rated pretty low. I like to have something a little higher rated. This is where I can charge the battery that's inside of here. These are supposed to be rated at 20 amps. So I like to use these and these are inputs or outputs. So you could put in a battery in to supply power this way or you can grab power out of it like we're going to do right now. So if I plug this in, if I wanted to test a backup camera, a lot of times your backup cameras are powered by the marker light. So you can turn your marker light on here and then you can power on the monitor 
and you can test a backup camera. Another thing you can use it for is testing a towed vehicle. So if you do a tow bar setup, you can test your wiring and lighting on that towed vehicle. So this is another box that I make that's non-powered, but you can use external power to do something like that. So it's been a really helpful tool, especially testing seven ways. If someone has a seven way issue, you can test the truck and the trailer at the same time and kind of figure out which way your, your problem is. And for not having to get a button pusher when you're working on slide outs, that's really great. So thanks for watching.